Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll start with what a data structure is and go over the basics of trees. I thought this will be a good first video to start with as trees are one of my most favorite topics. I promise I'll try to keep it as simple as possible and at the same time, keep it entertaining. We'll start with understanding what a tree is, what it means, and then we'll get into some of the basic terms so that we can get some more, uh, just a bit more technical. Then we'll look at some of the tree examples so that we know how to identify what a tree looks like. And then we'll discuss some of the different types of trees. So let's start with what is a tree? If I had to visualize a tree, this is what I would think. And actually, you know what? Let's flip this upside down because this is a more accurate representation of the tree data structure that we are going to talk about. And I swear, I'm not joking with this image. So as we have been saying, tree is a data structure, which basically means it's just a structured way to organize data and it stores a hierarchy of data. And some of the examples that we can think of is a family tree, which I think most of us have drawn. They start with our grandparents on the top, then they have kids and then they have their kids. And that's a basic family tree. Or we can think of a company structure where you have a CEO, then you have people under that CEO. And so it's pretty much a hierarchy. But let's take a look at a more technical representation of it. So this is how a tree is usually drawn in computer science. And as I mentioned, it has a hierarchy, which we can see you have one circular blob on top and it just keeps branching all the way down. And we can clearly see how the family tree follows the same hierarchy or the same representation and the same with the company structure here. And going back to my favorite example of the inverted tree that we talked about before, let me overlay the technical image that we had about a tree. And you can see it almost represents a real world tree just upside down. You have a root on the top and then you have a bunch of branches which start spreading around. So not 100% accurate, but I think this is the best we can get. So now let's talk about some of the basic terminologies that we use for trees. So the first one we'll start with is a node. A node is basically represented like a circle. Now this node can have data in it. It could usually when you write programs, it's generally just a number, but it can be any complex data. It could be an array. It could be a whole string, your name or whatever you want. In addition to having a data, the nodes can point to other nodes and it will look something like this. Now this connecting arrow here, this is called an edge. So basically an edge connects two different nodes and this can keep going. Now this node can further point to another node or a bunch of other nodes. And this, the first node here can again point to more nodes and this can just keep going on for how long you want to. So we talked about what a node is and what's an edge. So the next term that I want to talk about is a root node. So each tree has one node from where everything begins. Basically in our tree here, it was this node here, just marked as one. If you see, one has no other parent. So basically in the tree, the node that doesn't have any parent is the root node because no other node somewhere is actually pointing at it. So we just talked about what a parent node is. Now, as we said before, these arrows, they connect nodes together. So starting from the first node here, we had two other nodes. Now, these two nodes will be called the child of this first node here. So any node that points to other nodes, then those other nodes are basically called as child nodes. Then the next topic we'll talk about is leaf nodes. So in this tree, if you see the last nodes here, basically this node, this node, this, this, and this, they don't point to any other nodes. And these are like the terminal in the tree. So these are called leaf nodes.
to discuss the next few terms, I'm going to clean this up a little just so that we have a more cleaner diagram, or at least I'll try to draw something cleaner, no promises. So we have a root node, we draw some children of this root node connected by edges, and we'll just keep going. Okay, just one more here. And yeah, we can now talk about the next concept, which is levels. So a root node is at level zero. Now, as we go to its children, the level here becomes level one. And when we go to their children, the level becomes two. And if we go further, it becomes level three. So that's what levels are. Then the next topic is height of tree. So the deepest level that you can find is basically the height of tree. So if we had to ask what's the height of this tree, it will be three because we found there's a level three here. So we just talked about what's the height of a tree. Now the next term is the depth of a node. So let's pick a random node here. Let's say this one here. So if we had to find what's the depth of this node, we'll basically start walking towards the root. So here we start with depth zero. Then as we go to its root, we arrive here, which is one, and then we go here, which is two. So the so the depth of this node here was two. So basically the depth of a node is its distance from the root. Um, if we were to take another example, we can look at this node here. Now if we start walking towards the root, we go this way and that will be one. So the depth of this node here is one. So the last topic that we talked about was depth. Now, the final term that we'll talk about is a subtree. Now, subtree is exactly what it sounds like. It's the subset of a tree. So, in this tree here, in this beautiful tree, we'll just pick one random node. So, let's say if I pick this node here, then if we had to pull a subtree out of here, we'll just take all the nodes that are pointed by this node here and just, just separate it out. So in this case, if we had to gather all the nodes, it will be all of these three. So if we pull it out, it will look like this. And this is the subtree starting at this node here. Now, similarly, if we had to pull the subtree from this node, and that's the simplest one. The only node here we have is this. So we extract it out. And this is a subtree starting from this node here. And let's do something slightly complex. If we had to pull the subtree from this node, then we again gather all these, all the nodes under that node, which will be all of these. And if we had to draw that, okay, I'm gonna draw a very small diagram here. It will look like this. It's basically extracting all the nodes that were under this node including itself. So we get this subtree in the end. And those are basically all of the terms that we that I had to talk about. Um, these are pretty simple. And let's do a recap of this before we move forward. Okay, that was a lot of terms. And let's recap them before we go forward. So the first term that we talked about is a node. So all these circular blobs here is a node. Basically, each node can store some data and pointers to its children. Then we have an edge. Edges connect two nodes together. And here we can see all these arrows that are pointing from one node to another. Each of them are called an edge. Then we talked about the root node. So each tree has only one root node, which we see on the top here. The next one we talked about was parent nodes. So all of the nodes that we see here, except the last nodes, are all parent nodes because they all point to another node. Then the next topic that we talked about was child nodes. 
which is if any node is pointing to another node, then those other nodes are called child nodes. So all the nodes in the tree are child nodes except the root node because there is no node really pointing at the root node. Then we talked about what leaf nodes are. So basically all the nodes that's the deepest in the tree are leaf nodes. They don't point to any other children. Then we talked about levels of a tree. So starting from the root, that's defined as level zero. And as you get deeper and deeper, the levels increase. So in this case, this becomes level one, this becomes level two. And here on the bottom, we have level three. Then we talked about what's the height of a tree. So the deepest level that we can identify is the height of the tree. Then we went on to define what's the depth of a node. So for any given node, the distance from the root node is what the depth is. So let's say for this node here, the depth will be starting from the root, which is zero, then one, and then two. So this node has a depth of two. And if you go further deep in, this node will have a depth of three. Then the last topic that we talked about was a subtree. So you put any node from this tree and just and just lift it out of the tree. That's basically a subtree. So when you lift it out, you copy all the nodes underneath it. So if we pick this subtree with this as the root node, we pick these two other nodes and we can see this is how it will look like on the left. So this is all the terms that you need to know about trees. Most of them are intuitive, but if you forget, then I hope the summary here will help you review everything that we talked about. So next, let's take a look at some other tree examples that we have. So these are the basic rules for a tree to actually be a tree. Each tree has only one root node and all nodes have only one parent and obviously except the root node because that's the first node that you start with for a tree. And then a node points only at his children. The children turn point back at, the, at its parent. So parents basically have children. So let's take a few examples. So on the top here, we have four trees. The first one here is a tree, a single node. It's a totally valid tree. Second example, we have one root node and then three children from that root node, which is again a valid tree in continuation. Now this node here has two children. The node on the right has two children and this makes it a complete tree as well as all the three rules satisfy. Then we have a slightly different representation of a tree. So in this case, this is the root node and then it has some children and the other children have more children. So this is still a valid tree. Now let's look at some of the non-valid tree and I could only come up with two examples. I'm sure there are many more, but I think this is the most basic one. So here we can see a root node points to its children, totally valid, but this child basically points to another node and then this node somehow has two parents, which makes it invalid. Hence, this is not a tree. This is actually called a graph, which we'll cover in a different video. So now let's look at the second example, which is very similar to the first example. In this case, if we see this node has two parents, which is not allowed in a tree. Next. Let's talk about the different kind of trees that exist. So we'll only cover the most important ones, which I think we should know at this time. The first one I'd like to start with is binary tree, and it has a very simple definition. Each node has only two children at most, and that's the definition of a binary tree. So any tree where each node has at most two children, it's a simple binary tree. Now let's take a look at binary search tree. Now, every binary search tree is a binary tree with a special condition where all the values in the left subtree is smaller than or equal to the parent node value. And then all the values on the right subtree is greater than the value of the parent node value. So let's take a look at the example we have here. So here the root is five. So on the left, if you look at all the values here, the left subtree, all of the values are less than five. And similarly on the right, all the values are greater than five. And if you do this for all of the nodes, which we see here, they will all satisfy this constraint. And that makes this a binary search tree. Now there are so many other kinds of trees. We have avial trees, red black trees, B tree, NRA trees, and who knows how many more, but we won't cover the cover these trees in this video. Otherwise this video will 
be way too long, but we'll definitely cover these in the future videos. So that's it for this video. I hope this helps you understand what A3 is now and have some basic ideas. Um, soon I'll create another video where we'll program a basic binary tree and do some fun like insertion, deletion, searching, and yeah, a bunch of other things. Well, thanks a lot for joining in. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day. Bye.